Now, before I get into this video, I just want to let you guys know, I did not intend for this to be a two-parter, but I had so many things to talk about because Fallout 4 has so much to it, that I kind of realized that it might need to be a two-parter. Because if not, this video is going to be 50 minutes long, and I'd rather just split that into two videos that are 25 or 20 minutes each. So, this first part is going to be all about the good aspects of Fallout 4. And expect soon for there to be the second part, which is going to be the bad aspects of Fallout 4. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the video, and yeah, thank you for watching. Hello everyone, it's Infinity Break. A while ago, I started another series of mine that I never really got to continue because I got really busy and a lot of other things popped up. But now, as of yesterday, I have been working non-stop on trying to continue some of these series that I started. And starting with the easier ones and probably ending with one of the hardest ones, which will be the Daggerfall video. The series that I am continuing today is called The Good, The Bad, and The Bethesda. It is my own personal little favorite series that I have made, which I get to sit down and talk about some of the best and worst parts of each Bethesda game. Because as we all know, while Bethesda games are enjoyable, and probably some of the most respected and long lasting games that you can find in the market today, considering that some games can last you up to a thousand, or even thousands of hours, it still doesn't excuse the fact that there are some glaring issues and bugs with a lot of these games out there, as well as mechanics that just hold them back, that we just cannot ignore and that we should talk about to see if Bethesda does actually manage to ask us what they want to remove from the games in the future, that we all have our ducks in a row and that we can easily tell them that we didn't enjoy these factors in some of our best and most favorite games. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, today I am bringing you another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Bethesda. Today's topic, Fallout 4. The entire world unraveled. Peace became a distant memory. It is now the year 2077. We stand on the brink of total war. And I am afraid. So, Fallout 4 is probably considered by some to be one of the biggest mixed bags within the entirety of the Fallout franchise. It probably comes close to Fallout 3's level of mixed bag, considering that Fallout 3 was a step in the new direction, but Fallout 4 is a new take that wasn't as well received. It's got a lot of good features to it, but it has a lot of bad features to it as well. In fact, this game was probably the first game I thought of doing in the good and the bad in the Bethesda series, but I didn't do it first, mostly because I feel like at the time I hadn't really played Fallout that extensively considering that at the time I was actually kind of frustrated with it. But now, as of late, if you've been watching my YouTube channel and my Let's Plays as of late, I have been playing Fallout 4 quite a bit and actually have been playing it a lot more and enjoying it a lot more than I would have expected. And that is exactly why I wanted to sit down with you guys today and talk about it. So let's sit down and talk about the good. The good part about Fallout 4 is that it is probably one of the most updated Fallout games to date. Now that good isn't going to last very long, considering that other Fallout games will be coming out in the near future. So this little fact about it won't be very relevant for long. But it's true. The graphics, the movement, the mechanics, they're all fresh, brand new, and they feel very well done. The gameplay honestly has to be one of the most solid in the Fallout franchise, as before it felt a little bit more janky. Now, Fallout New Vegas was probably one of the most advanced Fallout games when it first came out, and compared to Fallout 3, was probably one of the best Fallout games when it came to mechanics. In Fallout 3, when you aim down the site with your gun, you didn't actually aim down the site with your gun, you more or less had eagle vision, or eagle eyes, and you zoomed in on a spot with your eyes. 
and your gun was just kind of off to the side where you were hoping it would hit someone. And the way you shot felt like it, you were actually shooting that way or aiming that way. This was simply explained away by the fact that Bethesda had never really worked with guns before. They tried to take the Oblivion system, the Oblivion engine, and basically shove it into the Fallout setting. The problem was they had to create an entirely new set of weaponry, an entirely new system to have that weaponry work, and that was the gun. They had to build an entirely new system just for the guns, and it was new, it was something they weren't experienced with in this engine, and you could definitely tell when you played Fallout 3. Moving into Fallout New Vegas, Obsidian had managed to actually work with this system a little bit better considering they were working with something that was already created. They improved the shooting, polished the way the projectiles worked, and made the iron sights and aiming a little bit more realistic. Though, when we moved into Fallout 4, Bethesda had decided that shooting just wasn't their thing. And in Fallout 4, they had decided to recruit a couple people from other studios in an effort to improve their shooting mechanics further. And you can definitely tell, because Fallout 4's shooting mechanics are hands down the best shooting mechanics I have ever seen in a Fallout game before. It's not just the shooting or the guns either, the explosives, the rockets, the way certain things work, they just seem to be very well done. Rockets fly at a very reasonable pace, you actually are able to hotkey grenades and other such things like Molotov cocktails and mines, uh, lasers and other such things feel almost instantaneous in the way that they actually are shot and the way the projectiles function. They just work so well, and I love that. It's actually so enjoyable just to go around with no context and get into fights with raiders and get into melee fights considering that there are now power attacks you can do without holding down the trigger. You can now function differently the way that you're trying to attack an enemy. And this is actually pulled from Fallout New Vegas the way that they went about their melee weapons. In fact, Fallout New Vegas actually worked with this ability very well as they actually gave your character different unarmed attacks they can pull off by running in different directions and holding down the power attack button with no weapons in your hands. It's actually extremely well done, and this time I feel like they definitely implemented that very well into Fallout 4's melee system. Okay, so combat is definitely a good, but what else in Fallout 4 really stands out in a positive way? Well, let's talk about the companions, shall we? Taking another note from Fallout New Vegas, the Fallout 4 companions have to be some of the best and well-written companions I have ever seen in a Bethesda game. Now, like I said, New Vegas had some pretty good companions, and I'm not sure how well Fallout 4's companions stack up against those characters, but the thing is, I still enjoyed having around these characters. The stories they had, the things they had to say, and the way they go about combat and such is just very well done. Their AIs are actually pretty intelligent, as well as some of the comments and some of the systems they have in place to actually make things feel a little bit more interesting. Saying something can have weight with that companion. It's no longer based off of an invisible thing in the background that you can't tell. You will be notified whether or not your companion likes or dislikes something. And though it doesn't make sense how you can immediately tell, considering that sometimes some characters don't actually say anything, but majority of the time, the characters that will actually have a problem with something will voice their displeasure through little comments they'll make now and then. This is actually intelligent and very well done, and I like it because it adds another layer to each person and each companion you have with you. You will like a companion more and more if they share likes and dislikes with you, though it can be said the opposite for characters that do not share your likes and dislikes. I absolutely dislike Strong, I dislike Kate, and I dislike a lot of the other characters that I do not agree with typically. Why? Because things that I say and do make me get pissed off at them very easily. Having someone constantly berate you or say they dislike you simply saying something nice and polite to someone is probably one of the most annoying features I've ever had in a game, but it makes sense. I probably wouldn't actually get along with someone like Kate or Strong. I could try to reason with them, but they would probably piss me off really, really easily. The thing is though, that's the whole point of the character. These companions react differently to each individual and how you play and act. It adds an extra layer to your actions, I suppose you can say. To the simplest thing like picking a lock or hacking a computer, that can be seen as something good or bad in the eyes of your companion. It makes you second guess whether or not you want to actually do that around them. Now practical things like lock picking can be kind of annoying, and this is why most people do not like strong, 
Now, Strong can be very annoying considering the fact that he will get angry at almost half the things that most Fallout players have to do just to play the game normally. But this is also how some people work in real life too. Some people dislike very simple things, and you can get into arguments and fights over things that are just trivial sometimes, and sometimes you don't want to be around those people because they just don't like those things. And that is a really realistic factor to Fallout 4. It gives these characters their own personality, and it makes me feel like they're a little bit more than just people that you bring with you to shoot the bad guys. They actually have their own likes and dislikes, and you have to consider that when you're going through playing as a different person each time. Now I know I don't make it sound extremely good or extremely awesome, and that's mostly because it's more of a mixed thing, but I can definitely see the value in it and I'm definitely impressed by the way it worked. Though like I said I will never experience how some companions react with one another, or how some companions actually play out, because I will never take some companions with me, because some of them are not, you know, they're just not built for my personality, and not for built for my playstyle. But it's still cool to think that because of that, that means if I do want to ever play in that way, or I do ever want to adopt a different playstyle, I can actually experience something completely new, and I can actually see something that I've never seen before. And like I said, this can be seen more of a mixed kind of thing more than a good point to this game. It just is kind of cool. And now, finally, one of the last major good points of Fallout 4. And some people will have different opinions on this, but I personally think that if it's done in a certain way, it definitely appears to be a very fun aspect of the game. And that is the building mechanics. Now the building mechanics in Fallout 4 aren't exactly perfect. They have issues, and I feel like Bethesda felt like they were just, just, I don't understand what Bethesda was thinking. They felt in their eyes that the building mechanics were the most amazing end all be all thing, because they kept releasing half of the DLCs that were scheduled to come out for the game, I think more than half of them were involving the building mechanics in some way, shape, or form, and sometimes even completely dedicated to the building mechanics, and it got kind of annoying. But on their own, without that in mind, the building mechanics are actually really well done. So how many times have you actually gone out into the wasteland and actually thought to yourself, in Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3, oh, this would be a cool place to build a house, maybe I could build my own base of operations? Well. Fallout 4 actually thought about that and said you can build your own place, you can build your own shack, you can build your own little hidey hole with armor and display cases and anything that you could possibly want. Workbenches, crafting, and that's another thing, the crafting, which also kind of ties in with the building. The crafting is probably one of the best features, because in Fallout New Vegas, you had these things where you could modify, you could modify your weapons by adding mods to them. Now these modifications were things like scopes, uh, suppressors, frames, you know, simple things that you would add on to your gun. Well, Bethesda saw that from Obsidian, and they put it into the base game, but improved upon it even further. It is really cool that your gun can be customized in whatever way you see fit. If there is a scope, if there is a suppressor, a muzzle, a stock, a body that you want to change on the gun, you can change it. You can even name it, which is really, really cool. I really like that. And they even improved upon that even further by allowing you to do the same thing to certain pieces of armor. You can make an entire set of armor, or name an entire thing of armor, whatever you want. You can modify it like the vault suit, you can modify the lining on it, you can modify your pieces of armor that you can put over your vault suit or whatever thin piece of clothing, and put pockets, put rad, uh, rad resistance, explosive resistance, you can put uh, ballistic mesh and stuff on it. You can add uh, a thing to make it more lightweight so it doesn't weigh as much. And it's just really cool because like I said, this adds more variety. This adds more customization, therefore you become more attached to your pieces of armor and your guns and whatever else you're wearing that, you know, has been customized by you. And while that's a cool mechanic, going back to the building, the building is something that is definitely unique in and of itself. This alone eats up probably the first hour or two of your gameplay. I remember the first time I played Fallout 4, the first hour or two was spent just building a big old house for me to live in. And I leveled up four times just from building. And that was funny and cool and I loved it. And I think the problem with this system though isn't so much the system itself but so much how Bethesda tried to push it and make it a major feature. See the thing about it is 
no one really cares about the building once you have a cool place. Sure, we like adding things to our houses or maybe building a new base or moving or whatever. That's fine. We like that. But Bethesda pushed the whole settlement system, acted like we really wanted to have the entirety of all the settlements just be maintained by us. And it's kind of annoying that the settlers couldn't maintain it themselves. You were the only reason that half the settlements were as big as they were in Fallout 4. And that was annoying. And that actually leads into another argument I'm going to lead on the cons and the bad parts of Fallout 4 in a minute. But just for now, that was the only problem was that Bethesda pushed it too hard. If they just left it the way it was in the beginning where you could build whatever you want, make your own house, no one would have had an issue with it. But we didn't need as much as they put into it, and we didn't really need them to push it so hard, because it wasn't that amazing of a mechanic to make, like, about 40% of your game based off of it. So, that's, that's that. That's the only problem with it. And that's really all I have for the good aspects of Fallout 4. There are a couple other things I'm sure I'm missing, but for the most part, this is where I think the major parts of the game that we play it for kind of end. I, like I said, I'm sure I'm missing one or two things, but that's the most I could possibly think of right now. And if I miss something, I apologize. Yell at me in the comment section. And that is where I'm going to end this video. Like I said, it was not intended to be a two-parter, but there's a lot to talk about. So, I hope you guys enjoyed what you watched, and I hope you guys come back for more. Regardless, whether or not you agreed with me or disagreed, let me know down in the comment section. Leave a like or dislike, depending upon how you felt. And of course, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Infinity Break, reminding you to say it with me now. Play well, eat well, and of course live well, friends. I hope you guys go out there and strive to break infinity.